Summary of Future Home of the Living God by Louise Erdrich. Cedar Hawk Songmaker is pregnant, and the doctor thinks that the baby may have received a dangerous genetic disease. Some pregnant women only have to make a phone call to find out about DNA conditions that run in the family. But things aren't so easy for Cedar, a Native American woman who was adopted by a white liberal family and is now separated from her birth mother. Reconnecting with her birth family means she has to deal with the anger she's had toward her birth mother for her whole life. At the start of the story, Cedar is getting her first scan at the doctor's office. There, Cedar tells the story from her first-person point of view and shows that she is separated from both her birth family and her adopted family. She says that most women come to their ultrasounds with a boyfriend or friends, but she's come alone. She says that she's come alone because she's upset her foster parents, Alan and Sarah Songmaker. All of her friends are dead or in jail. When the nurse asks her if anyone in her family has ever had a disease, Cedar says she was adopted. Even though she tells the nurse she is in touch with her birth family, she tells the readers that she has only ever gotten one letter from her birth mother, which she never answered. Cedar goes back to her foster parents' house, where she hasn't been in months, to find the letter on which her birth mother wrote her phone number. This makes her miss Alan and Sarah, who she hasn't seen in a while because they moved away. She feels nervous when she talks to her birth mother on the phone, and it hurts her when her birth mother says, no one, when asked who she's talking to on the phone. Cedar's feelings of anger are already stirred up, but she decides to go anyway. When Cedar goes to her birth mother's house on the tribe where she lives, she is shocked to meet her birth mother, who calls herself Mary Potts Almost Senior, or Sweetie. She is surprised that her birth mother is pretty and younger than she thought, but she doesn't like it when people say that they look alike. Cedar walks into the house and meets her grandma, Mary Potts the very senior, whom she loves. Cedar then asks why she was given up and if her family has any genetic diseases. When asked the first question, Mary Potts almost senior hesitates and answers uncomfortably, which makes Cedar angry. Little Mary, Mary Potts almost senior's younger daughter, walks in and stops what they are talking about. Mary Potts almost senior says that little Mary doesn't fuck or do drugs, but Cedar sees right away that her younger sister is very high and is glad she was raised by her foster parents instead of her birth family. When little Mary and Mary Potts almost senior leave the room, Cedar has time to talk to her grandma, who is the only member of her birth family she's warmed up to at that point. The grandma says that losses are common in the family, but not the details of any genetic diseases. After talking with her grandma, Cedar puts her to bed and is amazed at how old the woman is. Then, Cedar gets into a fight with Little Mary, who clearly doesn't like her and feels threatened by her. Little Mary goes to her room after they fight. Then Cedar hears the voice of Alan, the man who raised her. Cedar realizes that Mary Potts almost senior must have called her adoptive parents to help her through the hard process of meeting her birth family. She feels overwhelmed to have so much family in one place and to see her two worlds coming together. She hides in little Mary's room because she can't go anywhere else. There, instead of being mean to her, little Mary asks Cedar to help her clean up her messy room. This show of weakness affects Cedar, and she decides to help her younger sister. The two sisters talk to each other while they clean the room together. When little Mary gives Cedar a surprise hug, Cedar starts to cry because she knows that reuniting with both of her families is a new experience for her. About the author Louise Erdrich grew up in Little Falls, Minnesota, as the oldest of seven children. Her mother was from the Ojibwe tribe and her father was from Germany. Her family and the family of her mother are all members of the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa Indians, which is a registered tribe and whose leader was her maternal grandpa. Erdrich started writing short stories and poems when she was young, and she was one of the first women to graduate from Dartmouth College in 1976. After getting her BA in English, she went to Johns Hopkins to get her MA in creative writing. There, she wrote many stories that were based on her native background. Her first book, Love Medicine, was based on a short story she wrote with her ex-husband, Michael Doris. It won the National Critics Book Circle Award in 1984. 
Erdrick lives in Minnesota, where she continues to write and runs Birchbark Books, an independent shop that promotes Native American authors. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.